Hey guys, how's it going? So a couple of weeks ago, I went to a nutritional lecture uh, called Nutritional Lies of the 21st Century, and um, I was quite excited about going to it because, it, for one thing, it's, um, it's being put on by a couple of organizations that I'm fairly familiar with and have been to their lectures before, uh, InfoFit, as well as um, the Corey Holly Institute, and I was quite excited about going, so I Facebooked and Twittered it quite a bit uh, before I went, and one of you guys asked me to blog it. So. Um, even though these kinds of things aren't always something that uh, these kinds of organizations would like you to, you know, tip their hand to, um, I know them pretty well, so I went and twisted some arms and I got permission to reproduce some of it. So following here is um, a few snippets of the lecture, and then down below they've given me permission to reproduce some, some highlights, notes from the lecture as well. So first of all, um, go ahead and watch some of, some of the Corey's lecture, and then we'll come back. And everything you do with where they live. And I ask them, where do you live? And they say, well, 4295 uh, Seaside Crescent. And I said, I don't mean where you physically live. I want to know where you live inside of your head. What's going on inside of your head? What do you think is important? What is your purpose? Have you defined it? What is the meaning that you've given to yourself in this life? What is your passion? What do you love to do? What is it that you live for? And often I get a blank stare in the face. It's amazing how much we have inside. We've all heard this. There's something of enormous value inside of us, but where is it? How do I get to it? How do I unlock my potential? If a person doesn't want information, doesn't want education, doesn't want to make a change, do you think for one minute that you could honestly change your brother or sister or mother or father or wife? Can you stop them in their tracks? Can you beat them on the head on the head with a bat? Can you make them stop over drinking and killing themselves? You can't legislate that. You can't pray to God to make the change. It doesn't work. Believe me, I've tried. You know what you have to do? You have to focus on yourself, you have to resurrect yourself, you have to make yourself shine so bright that the light that burns from inside of you motivates everyone around you. And they want to be like you because you've got beautiful skin and you're lean and you've got abs and you're chiseled and you feel good and you've got lots of energy and you're 75 and you're riding horses and you're traveling. That is humanity, like a spark. My goodness, we have been, we, we've evolved in the wrong direction. We've forgotten that we live in a body. Number one, milk. That is the number one nutritional lie. We've all been sold a bill of goods. And let's look at the contrast from the mother as a mammal, as a human, who bears a child. And what ideally should she do? What are the glands there for? When you give live birth to your young as a mammal, you feed them with milk from the breast. And do you boil it first? Do you homogenize it? Do you take it out and process it, and sterilize it, and chop it up, and add things to it? No, right from the breast. So we know, absolutely, by looking at all the mammals on the planet, that raw milk is a design of nature. Okay, we are what we eat, eats. Now let me say that again. We are what we eat, eats. Whatever you eat, what did it eat? Because that's what's eating you ultimately. Now, to me, putting a child on formula is just sick. I can't even imagine it. It's so far removed from real food. How easy it is to eat crap when it's all around us. Now, if you and I were transported to the Amazon jungle, and you had a weight problem because you were addicted to Oreo cookies, believe me, that would be gone. You could eat bark and fish, and roots, and how much of that stuff did you gag down before you couldn't eat anymore? Really, natural food has a built-in buffer. You can't overeat it. You can only overeat junk. Think of it. How many apples can you eat in a row? Like, how much broccoli can you eat? If you're truly bulimic, you're heading to 7-Eleven and Max. That's where you're going. You're getting the ice cream and the chocolate bars and the junky, gooey, milky, gunky stuff that gives you the pleasure of an addict. So cereals are a huge load of sugar coming at you. The wheat, the cornflakes, 
the special K, loaded with sugar, corn syrup, all genetically modified. But what you've got is this gigantic amount of sugar. That's what carbohydrates are reduced to. And everyone that lives on this stuff is being set up for insulin problems. Bread is also super high in sodium, and sodium, too much of it, guess what it causes? Cancer. Now, I bet you're not thinking of cancer when you think of sodium. I bet you thought high blood pressure. That's the deception. That's the sucker punch. You know who started it? Napoleon. He had a contest. Who can make a cheap substitute for butter? And we're going to feed it to the military and to the common people. If you eat margarine, you're part of the common people. You see, margarine is cheap and it spreads and butter you put in the fridge, it gets hard. It doesn't spread on the bread. The bread is dead. Why use the margarine and the butter anyway? You see, our whole habits are based around the wrong stuff. If you never eat bread, that means you don't have sandwiches. What are you going to eat? My God, is there life after sandwiches? <laughs> Chromium, calcium, you name it. All the elements, all the minerals are gone, pulled out. You know that the body is so beautiful that it will do whatever it can to stay alive, even to the point where you feed it improperly and you're completely unfit, you're not trained, your VO2 max is right down on the ground. With every breath you take, you're creating cancer in your body. So vitamins are essential, and we don't get enough of them in the food supply. The lie is that, have you ever heard this? You get everything you need in the food you eat. And didn't we just confirm the fact that not one person in this room, those of you who have a massive interest in health, even knows exactly what you need? So if you don't even know what you need exactly, how can you possibly determine logically that the food supply, which is completely compromised, the one that you grew up on, how could you possibly believe that it's giving you everything that you need? Well, I'm lying to say. I'm alive. Yeah, but what kind of a life do you have? What symptoms are you hiding, even from your wife or father or mother? What things do you have wrong with you that no one knows about? Where are you going when it comes to your life? Are you heading in the right direction, a life of freedom? And I'm talking about freedom of disease. Are you heading into the pool of death prematurely? Here's my solution. You eat whole, fresh, natural foods, you find joy in doing it. You don't compare yourself to your neighbor or your friends or your father or your mother or your husband. You stop comparing yourself. You're alive. You know what your lifespan is? 120 max. Your life expectancy, if you're lucky, is 79 in Canada. You know what your health span is in Canada? 35. After that, the average Canadian starts taking drugs or symptoms that are never cured by the drugs because drugs don't cure anything. They make us sicker, we eventually go back for more, we get addicted to them, we become drug addicts because we need to find a way out of the hole we've dug ourselves into, then we start having voluntarily organs cut out of our system and we're paying them millions <laughs> for it. It's insanity, it's crazy, and you know how it starts? The grass on the damn ground. It's so simple. If the animals eat the grass, and the animals are well, and we eat them, and we move our bodies, we stay well, free of disease, always. And I'm tempted like everybody else, but you know what? When I am tempted, I think, my God, if I consume that, it might be good. But what a huge downside. Then I pull my shirt up, look at my abs. <laughs> or I turn around and flex my rear end in the air, and I look at those striations. And I think, you know what? It's worth it all. All right, so as you can see, Corey is a very compelling speaker, and I really did enjoy it. He did actually reaffirm a lot of things about nutrition and uh, the way I sort of view it. Um, so it was, it, to me, it was really, really self-validating. Um, but if you guys are interested in knowing more about these awesome organizations, feel free to check them out, uh, infofit.ca. Um, they put on a lot of really great lectures, and uh, they hosted Corey for this one. And uh, coreyholly.com for the, Cor the Corey Holly Institute is the place where you can check out Corey directly. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And give a read below to the synopsis and the notes. And um, I hope that you um, learn a few things from it because um, it's very, very valuable, valuable and powerful information. Take care.